Hi everyone, welcome to week four in medical math. Today we're going to take a look at percentages in chapter five, and then we'll take a look at what's called combined applications in chapter eight, which is a way to look at the relationship between fractions, decimals, ratios, and percents. Um, so again, if you're following along in your book, chapter five is what we're looking at uh, here in this first chapter. Um, so we're looking at percents. So you guys hopefully have all seen some percentages before, whether we're looking at percentages in you know a store where you can see that something is 25% off today, which is oftentimes a great thing because we're seeing a good sale. Um, we will talk about that at the end of this chapter. A lot of times you guys see percentages on your all's tests. You get a grade back on your test and you know you've got it graded and you got a 97% that shows that you got that particular score out of a possible point value of 100. Our magic number in this chapter is this number right here. We're going to see this very often, 100, um, as everything is out of. If we did, if we got everything correct on a test, then we got a 100%. If something was free, and when we're talking about percent discounts, then that means it is 100% off today. Um, so that's what we're going to take a look at, and that's something to keep in mind as we go through the rest of this chapter, that everything is based on out of 100, and so we'll get into that. Um, the first thing that you all want to see, if you're again, if you're going through your book, you'll see that the first thing we're focusing on is looking at the relationship between decimals and percents. So you guys may already know this. Um, if you don't, I'm going to show you guys how. But if I asked you guys, and this is something we'll also relate to our next chapter, that half of anything... Half of anything in terms of a decimal is 0.5. Like if I had a half of a dollar, I have 50 cents. Um, half of anything in terms of a percent is 50%. You know, if I gave half effort, I'm only given 50%. If, I, uh, if something is half off, it means it's 50% off. So right now, we're, gonna, we're actually going to come back to that one half, that fraction. We'll come back to that towards the end. Um, of this chapter is that's what we're going to look at in our combined applications chapter is the relationship not just between these three numbers on the screen here but also a ratio which we saw in our last uh, last week's lesson but right now I just want to focus on these two so these two looking at the relationship between 0.5 and 50 percent because I want to see what happens if I need to convert the decimal 0.5 to the percent here's what happens if I ever give you a percent and I say to convert that to a decimal, remember, everything is based on 100. That magic number in our chapter, again, is 100. So if I want to convert this decimal 0.5 to a percentage, pretending that I don't know that it's 50, what we're technically doing is we're multiplying by 100. So you could always just do that in your calculator. You could always take whatever decimal that I give you and multiply it by 100, and that would convert it to a percent. So 0.5 times 100 is 50%. Um, but an easier way to think about that, any time you multiply by any exponential of 10, so 10, 100, 1,000, any of those numbers, what happens is our decimal actually automatically moves for us. If I were to take 0.5 and multiply it by 10, my decimal would automatically just move one place to the right, and it, the answer would be 5. But I'm multiplying by 100, so I'm actually going to move two places. And so what happens is we fill in that extra space right there with a zero, and that decimal at the end doesn't have to be written. It's now no longer here. It's now here at the end. And that's where 50 comes from. We don't have to use that zero at the front. We just drop it off. We now have 50, or 50 as a percentage. So really, that's all you have to remember. Again... So again, you won't have to use your calculator every single time. If I wanted to convert my decimal to a percent, then all I have to do is move my decimal two places to the right. So I'll put a little side note here. So move your decimal two places to the right. So that's an S to the right. So no matter what I give you, if I said, okay, I want you to convert 0.75 to a percent, well, remember one, two, that now is at the end, and when it's at the end, it's a whole number, so that would be 75%. If I wanted you guys to convert, um, let's say, the decimal, and whether it's a decimal or not, even if I gave you 2, 
Well, 2 is technically a decimal because there's a decimal right there behind it every time we're looking at whole numbers, if you remember. And moving that decimal two places to the right means that that would be represented as 200%. And don't be thrown off if you ever go over 100. That simply just means that more was done. If I got over a 100 on a test, that means I probably did some extra credit. Um, if a company sold 200% uh, or made a 200% profit, it means that they sold more than they had anticipated. So again, you know, if you go over, that's okay. Um, let's see, let's do another one. Let's say I gave you 0 0.06 as a decimal. And I said to convert this to a percent, where again, where again, two places to the right, this would be 6%. No matter what, always just two places to the right. And if you're more comfortable with it, you can just put that in your calculator as just whatever that decimal is times 100. If I said to convert, let's say, 0 0.357, and I said to convert that to a percent. Again, two places to the right would make that 35.7%. It's okay to have a decimal within the percent as long as you did, again, those, those two steps if, or those uh, two movements. Moving that decimal two places to the right, you are converting it to a percent. We're actually going to get some more look at this, more, uh, more of a look at this um, in our next chapter too. So, so if I'm going kind of quickly, don't worry, we are going to definitely see this again. Okay, so let's look at the other conversion now. So now looking if I gave you a percent and I wanted to know what that was as a decimal, so now go in the opposite direction. So if I started with 50% and I said to convert that to a decimal, that's going to give me 0.5. But again, what's happening is, excuse me, technically... We are dividing by 100, so I wanted to write that up there. And anytime we divide by by 100, the only difference is now we're just going in the opposite direction. So technically what's happening there is we're moving now two places to the left. So two places to the left. So whatever percentage I give you, if let's say I gave you 25%, now we're seeing that percent symbol behind it. So I know if I'm trying to convert that to a decimal, I'm now going the opposite direction. With 25, there's a decimal right behind that since it's a whole number. And moving it two places to the left would put that decimal right in front of the 2, making that 0 0.25. Anything that starts with the decimal, guys, you want to get in that habit of putting a 0 in front of that decimal as that helps to kind of clearly see that decimal. And that's what the computer will look for, too. It, won't con it probably won't consider that. Um, now, I can go in and overwrite it, but if you gave me 0.25, that is still a correct answer, but I would start getting in the habit of making sure we're putting that zero there anytime you have a number that starts with a decimal. So keep that in mind, too, as you guys are doing these. Okay, um, let's say I gave you the um, percentage 160%, another whole number, so our decimal starts right there behind the zero. But again, converting that to a decimal, I'm going to move it two places to the left, now making that 1.6. So again, anytime you're converting a percent to a decimal, it's just two places to the left. So if I gave you, um, let's say, let's say 305%, once again, Decimals back there behind the 5, so moving it two places to the left would make it 3.05. So no matter what, as long as you're moving it two places to the left, you are converting your des or your percent to a decimal. So guys, like I said, we're going to get a lot of practice with that, but that's how you convert a decimal to a percent and a percent to a decimal. Decimal to a percent is two places to the right, so that's, again, that's this one right here. Decimal to a percent whereas percent to a decimal would then be two places to the left. So I'll show you guys how we'll see that, um, you know, how that, how that will look as we go through the next couple chapters, to, or next uh, chapter. Okay, so moving forward, next section we're taking a look at uh, relating to what we talked about in the last chapter. Um, in the last chapter when we were looking at um, proportions, we were looking at relating a known versus an unknown. And that's very much what we're going to do here in this next section. Let's say I ask you guys this. Um, let's say I, I got a test back and I missed two questions. 
and I know that there were a total of 20 questions on that test. Therefore, if I missed two, that means I got, an, I got 18 questions correct out of a total of 20. Well, I know I did not get an 18 on this test because I, ha I got an 18 out of 20. Remember, keep in mind with percentages, I want to know what I got out of 100. That's how tests are graded when we're looking at percents. It's out of a total of 100. So what we're going to look at here, if I got, what I can do is do what we did in the last chapter, or the last um, week's lesson, when we were looking at those proportions, remember what I can do is I can call this my known, and my unknown would be, I want to know what I got out of 100. So again, that's my unknown. And not that you have to, we're not going to really follow it too much like known and unknown. I'm actually going to give you guys a formula for this. Your book is fantastic in that it gives us a formula to help with this. But how I would solve this is using my knowledge of proportions. Since x is here, I'm going to multiply the opposite side first, 18 times 100, which is 1,800. And then I'm going to divide by the last number, 1,800 divided by 20. x is then equal to a 90% since we were looking for the percent. So that's what we got, that's what we ended up getting on this test. So that's what we're going to look at here in this section. In this chat, in this section we're looking at what's called uh, using proportions to solve for percent problems. But what's even better about this section is we are going to use a formula to help us with these. We can follow the, the proportion formula that says percent over 100 is equal to is over of. Some of you guys may have looked at that first um, problem that we just did, where I got an 18 out of a 20. Um, some people were taught that they can take 18 divided by 20, and it would give us the decimal 0 0.9, which what we just learned about with decimals to percents, 0 0.9 as a percent would be 90%. Um, so if you did it that way, that is totally fine. But the reason why I show it this way is because no matter what part of this question, and the last one we were looking for a percent, but all of these questions may, um, may vary. It may mix up a little bit, and I may sometimes be looking for the is and sometimes be looking for the of. And because of that, all that does in these calculations is it moves our x to a different point. So we're just cross-multiplying a little bit differently. So I will always utilize this formula instead of doing it the other way. So for those of you guys who did that the other way, who did the 18 divided by 20, that is totally fine. You may stick to that as you will still get the right answer but I'm going to definitely stick with this proportion formula. So rewriting this proportion formula with all the, without all those circles again, um, if I had again, oh whoops, it's percent over 100 is equal to is over of. Sorry, that's kind of messy. What's great about this uh, formula, again, is that it provides this for us for no matter what part of this that we're looking for. All of these questions, and I use is over of, but is over of is the same thing as part over total if you're looking at it that way. Our previous question was 18 out of a total of 20. So if you're looking at it that way, that's, that's totally fine as well. Um, but I used is and of because is and of is the language that's used in these types of calculations. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I mean. In some of these questions, if I said this, let's say I have, let's say I, I have the question that said what is... 15% of 86. So in this case, um, we're looking for the, uh, well, well, we're looking for 15% of 86. So as if, we'll look at this and we'll relate it a little bit later, but if I said, if something was say $86 and it's 15% off, I need to figure out first, well, what is 15% of $86? So that's kind of what we're looking at here. And the great thing, again, about this terminology is it helps us to show where things need to go in our proportion formula. Again, the proportion formula shows that percent is always going to be on top of 100. So just pointing that out in our proportion formula up here, your percent always goes on top of 100. That is always set in stone. On the other side, your is will always go on top of of. So in this particular question, I will set this up as 15 out of 100 since it did give us the percentage in this equation. The other part, the other side, is my is and my of. 
Since the question is saying what is, that's like saying we don't know what this point is in the question. So this is my x. That's what we're looking for. And then it says out of, or in other words, out of a total of 86. So that will go in my of position in my formula. Of will always be on the bottom. So that's why that was set up that way. So now I have my proportion filled out. And again, question mark is the same thing there as x. So you could always use x there. I just, I just showed it as a question mark, but it's the same thing. So remember, we always go across from x. So I'm going to cross multiply 86 times 15. 86 times 15 is 1,290. And then I'm going to divide by the last number. 1,290 divided by 100 would give us 12.9. So x is equal to 12.9. And like I said, this, calcul this formula works no matter what we are trying to look for. So if let's say this, let's uh, move all this stuff out of the way. Once again, just reminding you all, this is our formula. Percent over 100 is equal to is over of. So let's say this. How about um, 27 is what percent of 40? So in this case, this is actually very similar to our initial example, um, as if maybe I got 27 questions correct out of a total of 40. I want to know what grade I got on my test. I want to know the percent. So following that percent formula, remember, the perc anytime a percent is given to us, it goes on top of 100. In this question, we're looking for the percent. So because of that, x is going to be what goes on top of 100. On the other side is where 27 and 40 are going to go. One of them is the is and one of them is the of. And this tells us, right off the bat, it tells us 27 is, so therefore it goes on top, of 40, so it goes on the bottom. So that's how I would set up and how we could pick apart that question. So again, in solving this, what I'm going to do is cross multiply opposite of where our x is. We know that's going to be 27 times 100 would be 2700. And then I take that and divide by my last number. So I'm going to take 2,700 divided by 40. And there, that would give us x is equal to 67.5. And again, it is the percentage that we're looking for here. So it's 67.5%. So that's what we would get on that question. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, let's say... Um, Let's get rid of this. Let's say the question now says, uh, let's say 19 is 40% of what number? So following our proportion formula, remember, our percent always goes on top of 100. So that's going to be set up as 40 over 100. And then on the other side, it's my is and my of, but one of those is missing in this case. The question does say 19 is, so that means 19 goes on top, and we are asking for the of. It says of what number? So in our of position, we're going to put our x. So this one would be set up this way using that proportion formula. I'm going to cross multiply opposite of where our x is. 19 times 100 is 1900. And then I'll take that and divide by 40. And that means our total, our x here, is going to be 47.5. And that's how we would find that of, if we were looking for the of. So every single time, again, using that proportion formula, it will always be set up as percent over 100 is equal to is over of. And keep that in mind when you're looking at those questions and breaking those questions apart. Your percent is always on top of 100. That 100 is set in stone. And then your is is always on top of your of, and that too is always set in stone. So try some practice with those. There, there should be some more of those in the review video to help you some more with those. Um, but practice that. Um, and if you have questions, let me know. But I'm going to stop this video here so that you guys can go ahead and just move on to the next one.